What the? Ooh, you suck. Who the hell is that guy? Okay. What the? <laughs> that hurts, guys. What the flip is up? Tubers. Hey. I'm not naked. I'm wearing a towel. I filmed some stuff before I took a shower, and then I realized that I forgot to make an intro. So, hey guys. <coughs> God, I think I have asthma now. My lungs just feel compressed. <coughs> it's really like hard to breathe. I just got done with a personal trainer. So LA of me. I know, I'm just, I'm changing. My friend Amanda and I went and it kicked my ass. I don't feel the hottest right now. And I'm going out tonight. Um, <laughs> I don't know what we're doing, but I just know it's my friend's birthday. We're gonna go out to a fancy dinner and then just get silly on the dance floor. Um, I'm gonna be busting out some moves. I don't know how hard I'm gonna go tonight just cause my, Legs feel like raw hams, like truly. I was walking up the stairs to my apartment building and my legs almost just collapsed. I almost just surrendered too and just laid there. I don't know if it was leg day. I don't know when leg day is. Is leg day a specific day in the fitness community? I don't know. Maybe today was leg day or some shit but we focused a lot on legs. So I'm gonna take a shower right now. <laughs> Whoa, that was a weird. <laughs> what if I genuinely did that whenever I was excited? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> let's get started. This camera is so high def that it's uncomfortable. This camera is ridiculous. I have to use it today because I went to Hawaii like a week ago. I got sand in the lens. The lens can't pop out anymore. And it's frustrating and I know my mom is SMHing right now. Because I just got that camera fixed a month ago. So the fact that I have to take it back to Best Buy, Geek Squad is about to be so annoyed with me. I'm just so clumsy. I'm stressed and I just don't want to get ready right now because I don't really feel like going out because like I said earlier, my thighs feel like raw pieces of meat. And whenever I go to the club, it's kind of like a performance. Not a performance, but if I'm at the club, I gotta show these bitches what I'm made of. You know, I'm not just gonna stand in the corner. I'm about to show up and pop my booty. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'll spiritually do that if I can't physically do that. I'll spiritually, emotionally, and mentally do that, but I can't physically like pop it. Just cause my glutes. I'm just gonna kinda talk about life. First of all, before I get started, I'm like really flustered. I have a question. For my girlies with dry skin, what do you guys use for moisturizer? Do you guys use Pond's Dry Skin Cream? I have this Hemp's Lotion. On the back it says, smooth generously over entire body daily. And it says entire body. So I could put it on my face and it's hydrating cream. I'm just gonna do it anyway. And some of you guys are probably cringing right now. I just don't have anything else. It's at the point of dry where I can feel my upper lip crusting and like the sides of my eyes are crusting. Do any of you guys have that problem? They get so crusty and then when I put makeup on, and then do winged eyeliner, it just crusts off. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I put like some of this stuff right here on the corners of my eyes and it's still crusty. Somebody help me. James Charles? Help a sister. Okay, face. New Year's was cool. I spent it at one of my good friends Katie's house. I shared a New Year's kiss with Will, my boyfriend. January 2nd, Will and I um, took a little adventure to Hawaii. It was really, really fun. We went to Maui. So then, so my friend Ebony is one of Ellen's biggest fans, Ellen DeGeneres. She has been trying to win tickets to Ellen's show for six 
years. And finally, Ebony won tickets. She was gonna take her other friend and that was the plan. Very, very last minute, I guess her friend ended up not being able to go. So Ebony was like, dude, I don't think I'm gonna go anymore. I don't really have anyone to go with. I tried emailing them to see if I could switch the name and they haven't gotten back to me. She was like, if they do get back to me, would you be down to go? If not, I don't think I'm gonna go. And I was like, bitch, even if they can't switch the name on the ticket and you have to go alone, go alone, what? Like, you can't miss this opportunity. You're going either way. I don't give a shit what you say. That rhymed. So then she texted me while I was in Hawaii and she was like, so they were able to change the names on the ticket if you're still down to go. And I was like, yes, of course. Oh my God, Ellen's the best. I already think the world of Ellen because one of the best moments of my life happened to be on a previous Ellen show. It was when One Direction had that little concert outside for the Ellen show and Ashlyn and I were front row and Harry Styles. Talk to me. Yep, we had an interaction while he was on stage and I'll never forget it. I'll post the vlog in the description if you guys want to witness it. My friend who was in line with us got the interaction on her camera, so there's like live footage. After that, I always had this like special connection with Ellen. When Ebony asked if I wanted to go, I was like, yes, are you serious? Ellen is my bitch. She hooked it up for me that day. So I fly back on the 7th, on the 8th, Ebony comes over in the morning, and we're kind of taking a long time. We're taking a while to get ready. We were gonna be on TV, like we were kind of stressing out. I guess like the check-in for the audience members ended at 1 o'clock, and it was already 12 o'clock, so it was already noon, and we were like, shit, we gotta hustle. In me and Ebony's mind, we thought it was kind of like a first come, first serve basis of seating. So we thought the people that kind of like waited there forever got to sit closer to the stage. If we sit in the back, that's fine. Like, I just want to be at the Ellen show. We get there and we check in and it's just like a bunch of women in this like waiting area. There were some men in there, but it was mostly just women. Finally, this producer comes out and she's like, hey guys, so who's excited for Ellen? And all the girls are like, yeah! And um, she was like, I'm gonna call out five names and if you hear your name, come stand next to me. If you have a plus one or if you're with a party, you're gonna have to leave them here and just go off with me. You'll reunite with them later. And I was like, dude, if you get called, like I'm totally chilling, like don't worry about me. We didn't expect our names to be called because there was 400 women all around us. So then the lady calls out four names and then the last name was Ebony. She's like, Ebony Mahano? And Ebony like looked at me and I was like, like, go! And she was like, <laughs> and then she left and she like is standing in this group of girls and I just like, I'm looking at Ebony and she's just smiling, beaming from ear to ear. We don't even know what's happening yet. So then they all walk away together and they're like crossing the street to go to the studio lot. I'm just chilling there with <laughs> all these 30 year olds. And then another producer comes out and was like, okay, so if you are in the party of one of the girls that just walked away with us come stand in a line over here. And I was like, what the flip? And so I stand up. There were women that waited there all night and like literally slept in their cars, got in line at like 6 a.m. And they all saw me and Ebony show up late. And so when they saw me stand up, they were glaring at me. I've never seen so many 30 year old women glare at me simultaneously. But it was very, very intimidating, and I thought someone was about to pounce and start fighting me. Honestly, it was really scary. I didn't realize how crazy bitches are for Ellen. Like, bitches love Ellen. Anyway, so, so I get in this line, and I'm feeling all of the glares on me, and I'm just really uncomfortable. And then finally, the producer was like, all right, follow us, girls. And so we walk across the street. <laughs> What is this music? I don't even know what the song is. Ew, what the flip? My Spotify just started playing out of nowhere a song that I don't know. I didn't like that. Anyway, so um, we go across the street and they like lead us into the Ellen gift shop and I see Ebony sitting there with like the other girls. So I run over to Ebony and she's just like beaming from ear to ear. I was like, did you meet Ellen? And she was like, 
No, but the producers took us backstage and told us because I guess when you submit your application on The Ellen Show, one of the questions in the application was, what is your New Year's resolution? And Ebony's New Year's resolution was to do things that scare you. I guess Ellen picked her New Year's resolution and the other four girls' New Year's resolution. She liked theirs the best. And the producer pulled them away because he was like, hey guys, we need you to sign these forms because Ellen might talk to you on the show today. And Ev's just freaking out. What? Like out of 400 people? And so Ebony's telling me this and I'm so happy just because I know how much this means to her. And I guess um, Ebony's mom is a huge fan and all of Ebony's friends are just huge fans. And it's just like a crazy concept for someone where I'm from to like be on TV, let alone the Ellen show. That just doesn't happen to people that live there, you know? So it was just like a huge thing. Ebony, you're so lucky. So then the producer comes comes up to us and is like, you guys are our focus group. And we were like, focus group? And so the producer guides us in. We're looking at the stage and we're just like, oh my God, this stage is right there. All of those YouTube clips that I watch, like that's right there. They put everyone in the focus group kind of next to each other, but on the aisles. The whole audience comes in, everyone takes their seats. Ellen comes out, everyone's screaming, laughing. We just can't believe that Ellen is in front of us. We're like, holy shit, Ellen is not a robot. She's literally right there. And Ebony's freaking out. And during the commercial breaks, it was so much fun because I've heard some horror stories about Dr. Phil audiences and how like constructed it is, really controlled environment, you know? And that's what I was kind of expecting because stuff like that kind of gives me anxiety, like being in the audience and then seeing a sign that says clap and it's just like, oh, we're like zoo animals. <laughs> No, like not that, but you know what I mean? Just like realizing how fake it was. I don't know, but it wasn't like that at all. And that's what I really appreciate about the Ellen show and like Ellen in general. Like obviously we have to clap and get excited for Ellen, but instead of like a sign saying clap or like get excited or like sit down, stand up, stuff like that, it was one of the producers who was really, really funny and nice and sweet. I'm just gonna call him Jeff in this sense. His name is Jeff, he was so bright and smiley and genuine. Whenever like the audience had to get a little bit more hype, he would like look at the audience because he was genuinely into the show. Like I would be looking at him and he'd be like laughing, like cracking up at Ellen. Instead of a sign being like clap, Jeff would kind of look at everyone and he'd be like this. And so then everyone would be like, okay, Jeff, yeah. But also we also wanted to clap, you know? It was so chill, like, and then whenever Ellen was gonna come out, he would kind of like turn around and just be like, let's stand up. And then he would do it soon, and he'd be like, yeah, <laughs> yes, Ellen. He'd be like standing up clapping with us. It wasn't just some guy being like, and then just, he was just so into it too. The whole production was, and it just seemed like, not to sound like this bitch, but the, <laughs> The vibration in that room was so high. The energy was so great. The audience's energy and just like the production and Ellen, everything was so chill and fun. During the commercial breaks, instead of just sitting there awkwardly, Jeff, the producer, would get up and be like, all right, who wants to have a dance off? And then the audience members would have dance-offs with each other. Ellen had an amazing playlist going during the commercial breaks. Like, Rock Your Body by JT came on and I was like, oh shit. Like, I just get Ellen, like the music that she chose was all just bops and I'm just, and it was, it was bops and just like music that everyone kind of universally knows. So it was like, everyone was singing along and dancing. It was so much fun and I just, that just made me respect Ellen so much because I was like, if I had a show, this is exactly how it would be too. After a commercial break, Ellen comes back on and we're all like, woo, woo, kind of like the Wendy show. We're just like, yeah, bitch, because we're just so happy. Ellen comes out and she was like, all right, guys, so it's a new year and that means new resolutions. She's like, I'm going to ask my audience members what their New Year's resolutions are. And me and Ebony look at each other and we're like, oh, fuck. It's your moment, baby. Ellen talks to every girl that was in the focus group 
besides Ebony. And me and Ebony were getting nervous because we were just like, oh my God, is she going to talk to you? Like you're the only person that she hasn't called yet. Note, we literally didn't even think we were gonna talk to Ellen because we showed up late. We were just happy to be there. And then this happened. I'm just gonna play the clip. I'm just gonna play the clip. was to do something that scares me every day or something that kind of makes me uncomfortable. What have you done so far? Um, I came here. I was really nervous, but I, it's good nervous. You're just in the audience. I know, but I'm so, you're so close to me and yeah. I'm nervous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So that's good. I think that it's good. So what, what, what else have you done besides to, um, to push yourself? To push myself this year? Mm -hmm. uh, well, isn't that the resolution yeah, this yeah, year? Yeah, it just started. Yeah, no, of course, I know. Though, at the beginning. Yeah. Um, oh, so nothing. So nothing. Okay, all right. What about like singing in public? Would you do that? I would do karaoke for sure. Okay. Um, do you know the uh, Kelly Clarkson song, Since You've Been Gone? Yes. All right. Play it. Oh, God. <laughs> That should be proof that's uh it's january 10th and uh you complete so yeah that happened ebony explained it like when ellen called her name it was just instant tunnel vision when she stood up and was looking at ellen like everything else was blurry and it was just ellen's face and like her blue piercing eyes just looking at her in her eyes and it was just like everything was like morphing around her and then she said during the singing part, she like blacked out from nervousness. She didn't even know what she was doing, how she was sounding, like what was going on. It was just a complete cluster fuck of what the fuck. I just knew Ev was freaking out inside. So it made me so happy. The fact that she's been trying to win tickets for six years. And then not only does she just get to go to the show, but she gets to sing for Ellen. And then when the show was over, it was just just genuine happiness the rest of the day. She was like calling everybody and telling them word for word the experience. Uh, Connor? Yes, what happened on Ellen? Ah, I can't even like- Yeah, yeah I know. know! And so then like the show starts, right? <laughs> I know! <laughs> and like we, we're having like the best time and then I'm like, oh god, like what if it happens, you know? Like right next to me and Sarah, she's literally within like touching distance, Connor. Like, Ebony Mahano? I know! And then Connor, I shit you not, our shoulders are touching. <laughs> they touch tips. They touch tips. Can I hug you? Gives me a hug. So I hugged Ellen. It's gonna be Thursday, but wait, it gets better. <laughs> such a great day. I'm going to finish doing my makeup off camera because I'm getting so distracted telling this story. Okay, so I just got done with my makeup and I think it looks okay. It's not too much, it's just some flavor. You know, I added some glitter, it's kind of pinkish. I'm feeling it. Also, I can't tell if I'm blurry or not. I'm gonna do hair now. If you guys haven't noticed already, I do wear extensions occasionally. When I'm just feeling completely silly, I'll clip them in. So I think I'm gonna do that. But yeah, I got these at Bellamy. I think these are 24 inches. And they don't really match my hair that well, but I make it work. You know what I'm saying? I do what I can. Yeah, so after the whole Ellen thing, I've just been living on cloud nine, honestly. Like every single day after that has been a great day. 
I started a few classes and they're really fun. I'm taking a couple improv classes and I'm having a blast. I'm making friends. This girl was in my improv class and I was looking at her and we were kind of wearing the exact same thing. Then we all had to like get up and introduce ourselves and kind of like tell a funny story about us or whatever. And this girl got up and she started talking and she just gave off a vibe that she watched my videos just because of like her mannerisms and we were just very similar. And I was just watching her and I never want to assume that people watch my videos. I never want to be that bitch that's just like, I know she watches me. But you can't help but think about like, who has seen your videos in this room, you know? So I was looking at her and I was like, that'd be funny if she like watches me on YouTube. And it was funny because she was sitting right next to me the whole time. We had like a break midway of class. She was like, dude, like, I just want to say I love your videos. Like, it's crazy that we're in this class together. And I was like, oh my God, what? That's so funny. Because I was like staring at you earlier. And there was only 12 of us in that class. And I was like, what are the odds that I have someone that watches my videos in this class? And it was totally like not weird at all either. Like, I didn't feel weird about it. I was just like, oh, sweet. So I already felt like connected to her in a way. So then we partnered up for some of the games on the second half and she was really funny and sweet and chill. And yeah, 2019 is just really exciting. I'm working, I know like every YouTuber says this, but I'm working on something really, really cool that's so just like out of my realm, kind of. Not really, but like kind of. You guys will know what I mean. Yeah, my camera's about to die. It's literally blinking red at me. So I'm probably gonna have to continue this video with my phone. Sorry. It's about to go from so freaking beautiful, like this is insane, like too beautiful to like garbage iPhone quality. Just how life works. You get sand in your lens sometimes. You know, I'm just a beach gal. I'm just one with the waves. <laughs> I think my hair looks okay since like the front pieces don't really match. It's a lot lighter. I tend to just pull these front pieces back and like either braid them or just kind of like... I need to like figure out more hairstyles. Harry Styles. Why is his fucking name Harry Styles? Why is that his name? His parents are straight up goofballs. Like, you know they were giggling so hard while naming him. I wonder if he got bullied in school because of that. People were like, hey hairstyles. Nice hairstyle, Harry Styles. That poor kid, I wonder. He probably did get made fun of though. I don't know what to do. I seriously like don't even want to go out anymore. Should I just not go out? Nah, I gotta go out. I have to. Once I'm there, I'll have fun, you know? It's just like these beginning moments where I'm getting ready. I just want to die. So this is kind of cool. It's like a crop top and it goes off the shoulders. Maybe I could wear this. And then that blue jacket over it. Or is that too much blue? Ugh, I don't know. I need a stylist. But I wish that I could be my own stylist. <laughs> stylist. I wish I knew what looked right on me. I'm gonna try this on, see how I like it, BRB. Okay, I really like this actually. Wait, let me turn the light on. This is really cute, right? I'm not wearing a bra with it, but I feel like I don't really need to. My boobs are kind of big and they kind of sag down, but honestly, it's like, it's fine. I like this a lot. I'm gonna wear this with black high-waisted jeans. I don't remember where I got this though. So, people are wondering. Actually, there may be a tag in the back I can't see. So if you guys can see that, then there you go. Is my face too light for my body? I can't tell. Look at these buttons. I got these at Urban Outfitters, club appropriate. And then I'm just gonna wear these like black sneakers. They're just solid black, nothing else. These are classy. I get to move around. I get to dance. And yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I really have to go. I'm super late. And I've come to the conclusion that I do think that my face is a lot lighter. But other than that, I think I'm solid. And yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for new videos every week. Love you guys. Build the fast